in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ has made us a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father. Glory and kingship be his for ever and ever. Amen. Peace be with you, and also, and also with, with you. you. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, it is wonderful to be with you on this Maundy Thursday, even though it is not the way that any of us could have imagined. Uh, this is certainly a first for me and a first for the diocese, but I very much doubt whether it is a last. As we live through these dark and difficult days, um, and as we seek to serve our communities in new ways, there is much we are learning about Christian ministry and Christian discipleship. When I planned my farewell to the diocese, my hope was that on this Monday Thursday I could gather with the clergy and lay ministers of the diocese uh, to thank you for our partnership in the gospel. But now I find myself not just welcoming you, but welcoming many others from across the diocese. And I thank you for your ministry and for your service. Today, those of us who are ordained or licensed to ministry will make a new affirmation of our commitment to Christ and our commitment to the service of the gospel. And never before has this been so needed in the life of our nation. Let us then um, begin this worship by asking God for mercy, by calling to mind the sins and failings of our lives and seeking his peace. Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. May the Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God of our salvation, you anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit to proclaim the joyful news to the brokenhearted and healing for the afflicted. As we complete this season of conversion, Anoint our hearts with the oil of gladness, that we may rejoice in the great feast of your salvation. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust.
Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed his feet, had put his, off his robe, and returned to the table, he said to them, do you know that I, what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for this is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash the feet of one another. For I have set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor as messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Jesus says, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. This is how people will know that you are my disciples. Um, I'm presiding at this Eucharist with you not in my chapel. Uh, my chapel's next door. Uh, this is my study. And I'm presiding from here because, first of all, I wanted us to know why it is that our churches have to be closed at the moment. Firstly, because we need to do everything that we can uh, to make sure that uh, nobody makes a journey that isn't absolutely necessary. And though we are missing our church buildings hugely at the moment, we know that God can be with us in every place and we must make the home, the liturgical centre of the church for the time being. 
um, it's also that I want to show solidarity with you. Most of you don't have chapels in your homes. Uh, and so I'm presiding here. And it's especially lovely for me because it means actually I can use this altar, uh, which was made for me by my dad when I was Bishop of Reading, uh, when I didn't have a chapel in the house. And this was the altar we used then. And I haven't actually presided at it for a long time. One of the good things about being a bishop, there are a few good things, is that you can recycle your material. Um, and so a sermon that I've loved to preach over and over again around the parishes over the years is the one that begins, many of you will have heard it, it's the one that begins, what were the first words the risen Jesus spoke on the first Easter day? And uh, I've usually then said to the clergy, please don't answer unless you're very confident that you know the answer. However, many of you will recall that you have blundered in and got the answer wrong. Uh, we remember the words of Jesus to Mary Magdalene, Mary. Uh, we remember Jesus speaking Mary's name. But actually, that's not the first thing he said. The first thing he said to Mary on that first Easter morning is, why are you weeping? And I find this uh, profoundly beautiful that on the very first Easter day, the very first thing that Jesus says is words of compassion and reaching out to the sorrow of the human heart. Why are you weeping? And then what are you looking for? These words seem to me to be even more profoundly relevant and important for our world and our nation and our parishes at the moment as we see so much fear and anxiety around us and so many people suffering and dying. There are many, many tears being shed at the moment. That's why if I had uh, been able to do it, um, I would have worn a maniple today. I've never ever worn one, but there have been a couple of vestries I've been into over the years where they've been offered to me and I've always politely refused. If you're not sure what I'm talking about now, a maniple, it's like a, it's like a, like a mini stole, like a, like a handkerchief that you wear, that the priest used to wear on their wrist, on their left wrist. Uh, it's gone very much out of liturgical fashion. Um, instead, uh, uh, if we want to wipe away tears, we, um, we use a box of tissues. But uh, I only discovered recently that that is the real meaning of the maniple. Uh, it, it's about crying. And in the old liturgy, when the priest put the liturgy on their left wrist, this is the prayer they said. May I deserve, O Lord, to bear the maniple of weeping and sorrow in order that I may joyfully receive the reward of my work. That is a beautiful prayer. Um, a prayer that reminds us that as ministers of the gospel, we are the ones who not only minister to the weeping and sorrow of the world, but we are ones who weep ourselves. And over the years, I've often thought that I debase the currency of tears. It doesn't take that much. Uh, to get me crying. But I've also come to believe that if I want to be someone who shares in the joys of ministry, then I must share in the sorrows as well. And that's what we see in Jesus's ministry, particularly in these next three days. We see Jesus alone. Uh, we see him weeping, uh, before Jerusalem, which got it wrong. We see him weeping in the Garden of Gethsemane. We remember that he wept at the tomb of his friend Lazarus. And we know that he surely must have shed such tears of sorrow on the cross. My last words to you uh, as your bishop are first of all words of thanksgiving for our partnership in the gospel. I have so enjoyed being Bishop of Chelmsford 
and serving with you, but also I ask you to not just share the joy of ministry, but to share the tears and sorrow as well. And two verses from the Psalms seem to me to be helpful and relevant here. First of all, from Psalm 137 and verse 1, by the waters of Babylon, we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. I think many of us are feeling great sorrow at the moment for the world that seems to have been left behind. But my hope and my prayer is that our tears and our sorrow won't be about getting the world back to normal again, but when this is all over, building a new and better world. Already, just in the space of a couple of weeks, we have come to look at each other differently. We know that it is the poor and the disadvantaged who are suffering most as a result of this coronavirus. We also know it is those often doing the most menial and low paid jobs who we are most dependent upon. Nurses in our hospitals and those who stack the supermarket shelves at night. As we remember the world that was, uh, let us remember just how far it was from the things that we see in Jesus. And let us resolve to build a different world. And finally, Psalm 56 and verse 8, where we are told that God counts our tears and that he stores them in a bottle. And the final promise of the Christian faith, that in the end, every tear will be wiped away. As the Father has loved me, says Jesus, so I have loved you, and it is by this love, and by our tears and our sorrow, and our longing to make this world more like the kingdom of God, that people will know that we are his disciples. Amen. We are not blessing oil at this chrism eucharist um, for your information there is plenty of oil at the cathedral um, if there comes a time when you need to replenish your stocks and we will find another way of, of doing this uh, later in the year but we are going to renew our commitment to christian ministry and we're not going to do that in quite the way we usually do it in the cathedral um, we're going to do it together. So that is, licensed lay ministers, readers, deacons, priests, bishops, together we will, in a moment, make this affirmation of faith and recommit ourselves to the promises and affirmations we made when we were ordained or licensed to ministry. My brothers and sisters, Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy, others are difficult. Some bring honour, others bring reproach. Some conform to our natural inclinations and material interests. Others are contrary to both. In some, we may please Christ and please ourselves. In others, we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all these things is given in Christ, who strengthens us. Let us pray. God our Father, in our baptism you made us witnesses to the death and resurrection of your Son. Send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us as we take upon us the yoke of your obedience. Make us instruments of your peace and doers of your perfect will. And now,
LNMs, readers, deacons, priests, bishops, we say together, God our Father, in the name of Christ and in the power of your Spirit, we commit ourselves to you and one another to live, work and pray as one body in Christ, to trust each other as fellow workers in your church, and to give ourselves with body, mind and spirit to the ministries to which you have called us. Give us vision, give us courage and give us joy that the world may believe that Jesus Christ is Lord to your eternal glory. Amen. And may God, who has moved us to make this commitment, Give us grace to keep it to the end, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So therefore, in the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. We pray that God's compassion, mercy and consolation, God's love without limit, may be made real in the life of the world. For a world broken, engulfed by anxiety and distress, caught up in the current pandemic, and all who, beyond the headlines, still face famine, war and drought. For the peace of Jerusalem, Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. We pray that God's power, the rescue he offers to all, may be visible in the life of the church. For the church of the living God in every place, for the broken body of Christ on earth, for unity of faith and action, Today, especially for all bishops, priests, deacons, for licensed and authorized lay ministers, and for the whole people of God, that together in love and service for a world in need, we may be good news. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. Hear us. We pray that God's good news in Jesus Christ may fling wide doors and break barriers down and be known, preached and lived in every community and place. For all who feel that they are outsiders, for those whom we exclude from our fellowship for reasons of taste or culture, for all victims of open or hidden persecution, Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, Lord gracious, graciously hear us. hear us. We pray that the nurture Christ offers to all may help us build in this diocese and region across the communities of Essex and East London, places where all may flourish. For those who work quietly for the common good, for all in the public, private and voluntary sectors, for the building up of our common life, Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, us. hear us. And we pray for Steve as he prepares for his new ministry as Archbishop, that he may be equipped by God for this work. For all who lead the church in times of challenge and change, that they may lead, teach, nourish and refresh your people, that the church may be a sacrament of God's kingdom for the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Lord God, whose compassion embraces all peoples, whose law is wisdom, freedom and joy for the poor, fulfill in our midst your promise of favour, 
that we may receive the gospel of salvation with faith and anointed by the Spirit, freely proclaim it. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. And so we come to the sharing of the peace. I'm not quite sure how we do this on Zoom. Uh, it might be that there's someone else with you in your home sharing in this Eucharist. Well, please share a sign of peace with them. Uh, however, I know that many of you will be watching in isolation on your own. Um, I hope just being together like this will bind us together in the peace of Christ. But could I suggest that you offer a sign of peace to your neighbours and to your world um, uh, as we uh, continue in our prayer. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come has given the spirit to dwell in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And now in whatever way you can, uh, please share a sign of peace. I think at this point usually there'd be some music playing uh, but you'll be relieved to hear I'm not going to either hum or sing. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pour upon the poverty of our love and the weakness of our praise, the transforming fire of your presence. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. By the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, you anointed him to be the servant of all and ordained that he should enter into your kingdom through suffering. And now he stands by us and pours out for our healing the oil of consolation and the wine of renewed hope. In your wisdom and love, you anoint your holy people to be a royal priesthood, to share in Christ's suffering and to reveal his glory to the world. Therefore, earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We too join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks he gave it to them saying drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you send the holy spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of Mary, the mother of Jesus, Peter said, Mary Magdalene and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, Grant us your peace. As we come to communion, it is, of course, one of the great hardships of our isolation. 
that so many Christian people, most Christian people, cannot receive the sacrament at the moment. Therefore, I am hugely privileged to be standing here and being able to receive. And after I have received, I will lead you in an act of spiritual communion. But just as the woman who, though she only touched the hem of Jesus' garment, still received healing and blessing, we who cannot at the moment receive the sacraments of the church in the way that we desire, still receive Jesus. Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. body of Christ. And so we say together, thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O oh, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. I do hope you can hear it, uh, but I very much doubt it. But there's fantastic bird song just outside the window here. Um, uh, and in the silence, as we made that spiritual communion, uh, they were really giving it some welly. Um, uh, and that was very beautiful. So let us pray. Good Shepherd, you have welcomed us at your table and anointed us with the oil of gladness. May your goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life, that we may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And we say together, you have opened to us the scriptures, O Christ, and you have made yourself known in the breaking of bread. Abide with us, we pray, that blessed by your royal presence, we may walk with you all the days of our life, and at its end, behold you in the glory of the eternal Trinity, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. So, dear sisters and brothers, uh, coffee is being served after the service, or at least it is here. Um, and I hope you can go and uh, get yourself something in a moment when we conclude. Do look at the Holy Week at Home resources on the diocesan website. Uh, you'll find many, many really good things there that you can use and share with your people. But thank you for 
the great imagination that you are using right now. Um, if we had been in the cathedral, I had a present for you. I don't quite know how I'm going to get it to you, but as some of you may have seen online, um, yes, I'm afraid I've written another book. Uh, this one has been actually eight or nine years in the writing. Uh, I conceived a book about priesthood uh, about nine or 10 years ago, and then each one of my ordination charges to those of you I've ordained as deacon and priest over the years, uh, became a chapter in the book. It was published last week, I've bought 500 copies of it, uh, so I do have a copy for just about everybody who's, who, who's, a, who's a priest with a license uh, um, uh, uh, in the diocese. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to get it to you, uh, but hopefully in the weeks to come, or the months to come, we'll find a way. The last thing I am um, going to do now is commission Bishop Peter as acting Bishop of Chelmsford. Um, my final Sunday is this coming Sunday, Easter Sunday. There will be a short thing put out um, via the diocese and website on Sunday afternoon. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to be moving, obviously like everything that's up in the air at the moment. Um, but I will begin to work towards that move after Easter. And in the meantime, as we await the appointment of my successor, I want to commission Bishop Peter to serve in my place. Peter, we give thanks for the work in which you already collaborate, moving beyond traditional boundaries and modelling new possibilities in these changing and challenging times. Your task now is to take on the role of acting Bishop of Chelmsford, continuing to renew and to bless many ministries and to support communities across the diocese as they develop in their discipleship and in the understanding and exercise of their ministry, that they may become a sacrament of God's kingdom for the world. And I've resisted too much putting on the hat and taking it off again in this liturgy, but I think I must do this properly for Bishop Peter. Uh, Peter, you've been such a tremendous friend and colleague, and I've been so blessed over the years with brilliant uh, Episcopal and Archdiaconal colleagues and uh, people like Joel and John before him in, in the Darston offices. Uh, but Peter, I now want to bless you for this ministry that you take on. Peter, may the Lord lead you in his love, empower you by his spirit and equip you with his gifts. May he give you a heart full of love for all people, a mind open to the signs of the times and the wisdom to know how to respond to the voice of his call. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. And I did think we needed to give Peter a right of reply. Stephen, I want to thank you so much on behalf of us all. There'll be more on Easter Day, but thank you so much on behalf of us all for your leadership, for your service, for your love, for your fellowship in the gospel. And I thank you for your blessing me with God's blessing today. At this time of challenge, I accept and receive that commission to lead, to serve, and at times maybe to weep in the days to come. Uh, yet I know that I remain but one part of a truly servant team here in this mighty Diocese of Chelmsford. Uh, that will lead us in mission into what will be, to some extent, a very new world, as you said earlier. And so, may the Lord bless you too, as you have blessed us. And I accept and receive this commission with thanksgiving mm, and with I some trepidation.
of Peter. Thank you so much. Uh, and I wanted to finish, dear friends, with, uh, you won't be surprised to hear a poem, and forgive me, it's one of my poems that I wrote in the book, Striking Out, um, one of the happiest bits for me of the last 10 years was when I got away from the Chelmsford Diocese and went off on my sabbatical and walked to Santiago. Uh, but this poem is a poem about moving on, um, uh, about following a God who breaks out of tombs and who is always a God of new beginnings and new adventures. And it's called Carrying His Stamp. With him, it was always time to pitch camp. It was as if he wished to walk the highways of the world and not just this small piece of it. The oil was always burning in his lamp. He could see through the artifice of my ways, my motives, and staunch the increase of it. To walk with him meant carrying his stamp. Indeed, to be called pilgrim is such high praise. He blessed everyone, sharing the grease of it. So now I walk with blisters and with cramp, remembering the one who, as he dies, prays, forgive them. There is no release of it holding in the darkness. So my eyes gaze on the road ahead and the sweet piece of it. Our help is in the name of the Lord who has made heaven and earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. May the God, who shakes heaven and earth, whom death could not contain, who lives to disturb and heal us, fill you with power to go forth and proclaim the gospel and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.